economically does it work to build new office space for an entity that's probably paying 25, 30, 35 a square foot for rent? Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't work at all. I mean, there's a, there's a reason, uh, in spite of the incredible resurgence in Brooklyn uh, over the last 20 years, and, and Mary Ann has really been at the forefront of that um, along with us, but uh, there's a reason, in spite of all of this energy, all this talk about tech, all these companies uh, sort of proliferating there, you haven't seen a single new building being able to be built uh, for these purposes. It's not because people in capital are wildly irrational. It's because it doesn't work. You know, you don't have to be a genius to figure out, you know, if you get $30 in rent and you pay taxes and you pay operating expenses and, uh, and you pay your debt service and it costs whatever, $150 to buy the land and three or 400 or $500 to build the building, uh, that's not such a good business. Um, there was a story last week about somebody who's talking about doing one up in North Williamsburg. I don't know anything about it. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it'll happen. I think we're getting near the cusp in Brooklyn in places where land prices are cheap enough and you have an owner who might be uh, you know, rich enough that he doesn't need to eat off these kinds of projects that uh, you might start to see a little of it. But the economics really doesn't work. And, and I think you know, to a large extent, given the size and breadth of our city, even outside of the tech conversation, we've really seen almost no new office space created in the city. I mean, given the size and scale of our city as a business district, you know, you can kind of count on one hand the number of new office buildings that have been built in the last generation. You know, and down to, you know, it took a terrorist attack. So that stuff, uh, that's a slightly different story. Um, but the market is not super keen on building new office space. And I think, you know, the couple examples where you can sort of point to it, what we're doing at, at Domino, and I think if you talk to the related people, if they were here, they would give you the same answer about Hudson Yards. I think there's starting to be an understanding that there's a public policy benefit to having office space, right? When we look around the city, these pure residential enclaves feel very suburban. They feel not of our city. They feel a little unenergetic and uninteresting uh, and lacking the sort of intensity that most New Yorkers like to feel in terms of a place. Um, so we certainly feel that way. We think that what's created Dumbo more than the residents who pay lots and lots of money for apartments is that fabric of office workers. So at a place like Domino, we are trying to essentially use the residential rents to cross-subsidize uh, to create the commercial vitality. But it's very, very, very difficult. As a developer, you know, I've got a fixed number of square feet to build. I can rent it to a residential tenant for $55 or $50 or something like that. I can rent it to a commercial tenant for $30. So every square foot that I'm transferring from residential to commercial is costing me 20 bucks. And I've got to figure out where in the context of a big development, the benefits from the commercial in terms of making the whole project better, find the right mixture with throwing away X numbers of million dollars of income on day one. Um, and that's kind of the balance.